<laughs> Verily, tis me! Twas I who was waiting for you to come watch this video! Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, well, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. See you all next time. Okay, bye! <laughs> me. Apart from the bit about thieving gas, obviously. Dang, Santa's mad. <laughs> Why did Tony to be here? Let me out! <laughs> I'm a man of logic, me. I'm, I'm sorry, I laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the second case of the Great Ace Attorney 2. We're in the middle of a juror's assessment. What is this called? I forgot the mechanic of, my, of this game all of a sudden. The, I don't know. The juries are all talking about gas, apparently. Do you want me to press on the old man? I, listen, he at least has something relevant to talk the about. The only one. <laughs> Does that mean that if the victim could be shown to have ingested something else, you'd change your leaning? Mm, sorry. Was that now? Oh, now you don't you don't hear anything. So much for paying oh, attention. Um, I was just saying, if the victim did actually eat or drink something else on the night. What's the matter with you? Sorry. I said, if nothing else passed the victim's lips that night, there's no other explanation, is there? Haven't you been listening to me at all? I feel like there's an English expression about a pot and a kettle that's appropriate here. <laughs> Did everyone just stop to figure out what he's talking about? <laughs> I... My brain stopped, stopped working after we were done with the last recording. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to the other jurors who don't even appear to have anything to say about the case at all, it would seem that this elderly gentleman has been listening to proceedings far more intently. I, I suppose. The trouble is... He has selective hearing. <sighs> exactly. But still, this sure juror may well be the key to the breakthrough that we so desperately need. Wild. If Ugh. only he could have been shown to be hu hu huffing gas or something. This is hopeless. There's no way for me to appeal to these people. Is I do think that the only way we should overcome this difficult situation it's by exposing the way in which Mr. Shamsbeard was really poisoned. We have to prove that it happened in some other way and not via Mr. Natsume's tea. Yeah, I know. Trouble is, I have absolutely no idea how it did happen. Miss Narahodo, I wonder if perhaps there's something you might have forgotten. Huh? Like what? It's important to watch everyone involved and pursue people if they react to something someone else says. If you'd like to remind you exactly what I mean, I'd be more than happy to, of course. Once again, so Seki-san's fate is entirely in my hands here. I probably owe it to my client to hear any advice my assistant may be able to offer. What? What is she refreshing my memory of? Is she telling me how to do this mechanic again? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what she's trying to refresh my memory of. Actually, I don't think there's any need. It's better that we start trying to change these jurors' minds as soon as possible. Of course. I'm sure you're right. But if you decide you'd like your memory refreshed, you need only ask Miss Narahodo. I'm just like, are you trying to refresh me on the mechanic or what? <laughs> Alright, where are the... Uh, this person... Wait, whoops. I went too far back uh you and santa i believe yeah yeah okay yes uh Objection. there we go those two statements clearly contradict each other good gracious to whose statement do you refer counsel juror number six did you hear what juror number three just said what? Yes, of course! I I heard him mumbling about something or other. There is another explanation here, I believe. Something besides Mr. Natsume's tea did, in a matter of speaking, 
Pass the victim's lips on the night in question. What? What explanation? I wonder, did the police check the mouth of the gas pipe feeding the wall light at the scene? To see if there were any traces of poison there. I was curious to see what your floundering would result in this time. But the mouth on a gas pipe? Scotland Yard have enough to do without exploring such irrelevance. What a piece of work as a man! You shut up. What are you trying to say, Mr. Shamspear? What speakest thou? Prithee, is it not strange and strange? That is what I say to thee, sir! I have no idea what he just said, but sure. I thought I'd be quite clear. I've been quite clear, but let me put it another way. The strychnine could have been on the mouth of the gas pipe that feeds the wall lamp in your room. And that is how the poison came to enter your body. Good lord. Rubber, rubber, I thought I was joking about the whole gas thing. But... <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> are they tasty then? Gas pipes? Is that what he's saying? No, don't do it. The gentleman suggesting that the poor man was so desperately hungry he tried to fill his belly with gas. What are you? <clears throat> Perhaps the actress would perform a kiss scene with him. <laughs> For shame, madam, speaking thy fancy. I assure you, I'm not such a buffoon that I have to kiss pipes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I can see it with you. <laughs> This is no summation examination. This is a farce. That's what we say about all of them. Shut up. <laughs> the prosecution will not stand for any more of my learned Nipponese's friend's conjecture. Uh, I have my own conjectures to make. <laughs> to begin with, the lamp in the victim's room is high on the wall. In order to have placed his lips on the pipe that feeds it, he would have had to be a contortionist. Uh, These are empty assertions. Have, uh, sir, There's have no you seen all the proof. weird movements he makes? There is no possible proof that the man did as you say. There is certainly not a photograph of it or anything. <laughs> it's true. I have no proof that Mr. Shamster put his lips to the pipe. However, I can say with some certainty that on multiple occasions, Mr. Shamster has been doing something in front of that lamp on his wall, and that sounds... Really bad out of context. <laughs> I'm sorry, he's been doing what now? You know, something. Something. Look, we, we see him straighten out that rod all the time. All I'm saying is he might be talented at something. <laughs> and I have evidence to prove oh, no. it. Oh no. <laughs> Yo, we don't need those kinds of photos, man. <laughs> All right, you've got our attention, lad. I'd like to see how you can be so sure of yourself. So would I. Let's see this evidence, then. Now I've got the jury's ear. I need to take this, make this opportunity count. This is the proof that, time and time again, Mr. Shamsworth stood in front of his gas lamp, which is the photo, because there's nothing else, so... Boom! Take that! What the? These are... Wait, what are they called? Oh, yeah, skin prints that were found at the scene. Oops. <laughs> Wait, how did I get there? Skin prints, Council? I've never heard of such things. The Justice Ministry is currently assessing whether or not to permit fingerprints as evidence in court, however. My lord, it's an exciting new forensic technique developed by the great detective Mr. Hodak Shams. Oh, it reveals all the places that Mr. Shams be attached in his room. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, that's black magic, isn't it? Hmm, well, if anyone could invent something like this, it's that great Shams fellow, that's for sure. I agree. This month's edition of Engineering Thumbs was quite fascinating. We found skin prints in many places that you would expect. On the table, on the costumes. 
However, Mr. Shanspear also appears to have been touching some very unexpected places in his room. <laughs> Jesus Take that Christ. One out of context. Yeah, I know. I'm just like, if you just <laughs> heard the audio. for white just make this so much worse. <laughs> I'm just like I have so many jokes I want to make that I am holding myself back from making we're, we're to trying. keep Tice's video PG-13. Yeah, we're like we're just trying to keep it PG-13, but it's really hard. I need, need you to appreciate my restraint. Look, the 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 freaking game is just writing itself right now, honestly. Like it's kind of hard not to, especially when you just like why don't you just listen it's to this and you have hard. no I see. Lois, okay. Lois, I swear to God, now you're going too far. <laughs> you literally said it! <laughs> For example, here. Around the page. Around the hanging picture. <laughs> <laughs> this we, is a chance to yourself. <laughs> Look, I think we've gotten so sick and tired of this case. This is what's happened now. This trial is a sham. Spear. Spear. <laughs> Around the hanging picture there. Indeed, multiple handprints appear to be visible. Well, I wonder. Could he have been appreciating the artwork, perhaps? <laughs> what? Yeah, sure. <laughs> How is my favorite way? I go to an art museum and I just bang the wall next to the picture. At first, my colleagues and I thought the same. However, imagine standing with your hands where those prints are, and you would find yourself directly in front of... In front of... Ah! I don't believe it! The cast lamp! Though the reason why isn't immediately obvious, it's clear that Mr. Shanspear has regularly been standing with his hands to the wall in front of that lamp. Right, what have you been up to, you nut? <laughs> I can't, this case. <laughs> I'd ask the court to recall juror number four's earlier statement. Me? What did I say? A lot, but that's not important. You said that blowing into a gas pipe would make the lights in the entire building flicker. And now, if you'll recall juror number three's statement, What's me now? When the gas worker who visited his home blew with too much force into the pipe, it caused all the lights in the gas stove to go out, and gas to start leaking into the rooms. Obviously that incident was an accident, however the simple fact is... If Mr. Shanspear were to have blown hard into the gas pipe here in this room, he could have extinguished every other light and gas stove in the building at will. Rocket. Uh, are you suggesting that the man purposely caused the gas to? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't do that. This is summation examination. Please sit quietly. <laughs> Whilst I acknowledge that the prosecution is required to remain silent during a summation examination. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I must toast my learned friends out of disregard for the letter of the law. What is the meaning of this, Lord Van Zix? Look, my lord, I'm on drink like ten. Ten? Ten. Sure. Ten thousand more like it. <laughs> this curious photograph, or whatever it is, presented by the defense. The so-called skin prints. Clearly that cannot be accepted as any form of usable evidence in this case. But, but it's an exciting new forensic technique, developed by a great detective. It's nothing. A mere toy developed by an amateur sleuth with too much time on his hands. Uh. Mm, certainly. You've been researched of this nature by the esteemed Mr. Sholmes. Cannot be recognized as, by the court as formal evidence. But... Please, my lord, if I may. Mr. Sato? It was at the defense's intention to submit the skin prints as formal evidence. We merely wish to present the results of the great detective's investigations of the scene. As a tool to which I explain the possibility to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. 
Hey, we found a loophole. And if the trial were to come to an end now, we should never know the truth behind these mysterious handprints that everyone has now seen. I don't believe we can allow that to happen. I'm sure the jurors would agree. Basically, oh my god. Basically, I'm not submitting this as evidence, but you've now seen it, so you can't unsee it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're right! Whether the strange handprints are a significant clue or not, it's down to us to decide. Juror number three! Oh yes, I do declare the Great Detective's investigation result sounds absolutely fascinating. I don't want to hear what that shady actor fellow has to say about those shady handprints. Just like I love how like these flames seem to like have a hundred percent accuracy to go where it needs to go. Like I'm just sitting here like, man, what if those fires just like went the wrong way and you know? No, the, the fires judge. provided by Altamont and gas. It's the so judge. Fine. Yeah. What's the matter with you two? That was foolhardy. No, I did say it, didn't I? And I do like to break a promise. No, wait. Why did you sound like Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did he sound like Shakespeare? Look, I have a cough drop in my mouth, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> Halfway done, Mr. Narahodo. If it's one more to changes his or her mind, Mr. Natsume's trial will have to continue. Thank you, Mr. Sato. But I couldn't have done it without you. Oh no, it was you who identified the clue after all. This is very much your success. Oh, he's sweating. <laughs> oh, he's sweating. Why, Mr. Shamspear, you seem to be losing your composure. Just one more challenge, Mr. Nadahodo. You can do it. Thank you. <laughs> very well. Very well. Continue, counsel. Oh my goodness, we're still not done. All right, what do we got? Okay, whatever, buddy. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, okay, you're, you're, come on. All the evidence, you say. That's right, and there's no room for doubt. It's all pouring at that Japanese man with the big mustache. Your mustache is bigger. Says the, <laughs> says the Englishman with the bigger mustache. <laughs> How does it feel, KV? I know. Oh, How does I've it walked feel? you many times already, Lewis. What are you talking about? <laughs> that should work for outcome. <laughs> but the defense just demonstrated another possible exclamation for the events on the night in question. What do you make of that? What? Your so-called skin prints? It's an exciting new forensic investigation technique developed by the great detective himself. The numerous handprints on the wall are clearly out of the ordinary. And if Mr. Shakespeare had indeed put his mouth to the gas pipe on the night in question, it can't be denied that there's a possibility that's where the poison was. Well, yes, I won't deny that it's playing on my mind. But as the prosecution rightly says, we should pay no heed to unacceptable forms of evidence. I'm gonna stop you right there for a second. The prosecution also brought this whole stupid thing about the Thames earlier, and now we're here. So you know what? Bullcrap reasoning for why we're here, we're gonna use a bullcrap reason for why we're getting out of here. And besides... Yes? Even though the fellow has been up to some mischief with the gas pipe dozens of times before, it doesn't mean he got up to the same shenanigans on the nine question, does it? No. If you can't make your case better than that, I'm afraid I can't change my stance. You do make a very valid point, sir. What? Hmm, that's true. Perhaps I was a little hasty. Oh no. Uh, no, 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 wait! Look, you've got your chance here, haven't you? So it's time to prove your theory. 
If you and your Japanese cohorts can, that is. I think we can. Just leave our nationality out of this, please. Miss Nerehoto, if we can substantiate our position, I can say the jurors that change their minds before will very well change them back. What can I do? Is there more proof I can give here? Can I show that Mr. Shamspear really did blow down the gas pipe in the night in question? Uh... Do we have evidence? Because I know we have the uh, story I of this, I, but I don't I, know if we have evidence. I think we have supporting testimony, because didn't Mr. Natsumi say that, like, the, the gas were out that night? And he felt that like he was, right, yeah. he was... He said he was suffocating? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, I don't think we have evidence, but I think we have supporting testimony, which, you know, I don't know how long, how far that's going to go, but you know what? We're listening to Shamspear, so clearly Natsume's testimony should be fine. Clearly, right, game? No, in truth, I don't have evidence to support my theory. However, there is witness testimony that substantiates it. What's that? Testimony? This is incredible! Whose testimony? Yeah. It's all connected. Everything is linked. A person whose testimony revealed details about the gas in the Garrett of Residence that night, namely... Uh... Natsume. Hey? Oh, I can't even double-click. I have to hit R? Okay, fine, game. I'm uh, older than Natsume? What the hell? <laughs> we all are. Obviously, I'm talking about the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsumi himself. The defendant? At the very beginning of the proceedings here in court yesterday, Mr. Natsumi said the following. My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings! Even on that fateful night it happened, when I returned from Mr. Shanspear's room, I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed. But before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me! On the night in question, the gas in the defendant's room went out. So I asked the court, what, was that a mere coincidence or not? Good golly! So that trap's just been and into the gas pipe to make the man's stove go out on purpose? Now hold your horses there. What would he do that for? He's sweating. Mr. Foreman. What the? What is it, man? We cannot allow judgment to be passed while this doubt remains. It's true that I don't have conclusive evidence yet. However, you must surely agree. There is more to this case than meets the eye. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I said at the outset, I'm a man of logic, first and foremost. Yeah, but y'all got selective hearing. That's four jurors leading towards not guilty, my lord. We've overturned the decision. Therefore... The defense calls for the trial to continue. Rubble, 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 rubble. <laughs> As the defense has rightfully indicated, the, summa the summation examination has concluded with a majority of jurors altering their decisions. Two jury members now call guilty. Four now call not guilty. Therefore, the jury's opinion is conflicted and in accordance with the law of this land. I hereby order the continuation of this trial. I still don't understand why Juror Four is the one calling for guilty, but whatever. Mr. William Shamspear. My lord, how can thy humble Shamspear serve thee? What say you in response to the various revelations made during the summation examination? So God mend me, I do solemnly swear. I recall aught of either the lamp or the pipe. But your handprints have made a tiny mess all over the wall there. How do you explain that, eh? <laughs> there goes the bottle. <laughs> My leg. 
I am done with this. The dignity of this great courtroom has been sullied enough already. Juror number five. Oh, me? As I went to some pains to point out already, a print from the self-professed detective's toy has no place in a British court of law. Ugh. As such, whether or not this man did indeed stand before the gas lamp with his hands against the wall, remains, at this time, unestablished conjecture. You would all do well to remember that. Okay, cool. How about we send Scotland Yard to go look around that area then? <laughs> okay, if you don't if you don't want to do the, the, the freaking skin prints, why don't uh why don't you send Scotland Yard to actually investigate that area then? I don't wanna do that. What are you talking about? I don't wanna do that at all. But the prosecution must concede that it would be extremely simple to verify. Just or the mouth of the gas pipe feed in the lamp, the feed in that lamp in Mr. Sanchez's room to be examined. And thank you, Rionelski, exactly what I was going for. If there that is English, but I hate that sentence. I know, that was really hard for me to read. <laughs> if there are traces of poison there. What appears to be extremely simple is my Nipponese friend's mind. You will recall that in order to check for the presence of poison in the tea, some reman some remnants of the tea were required. Yes. Therefore, it shouldn't be beyond your wit to imagine that even if poison were to have been spread on the pipe, it would have completely evaporated by now, making any analysis impossible. Oh. Really? Uh, I didn't think of that. In any case, Counsel, I fail to see what could possibly have motivated the man to do as you describe. Why on earth would this fellow have wanted to blow air into the gas pipework where he lived? There's only one possibility that I can think of, and that is to use the leaking gas to commit murder. Rubble, rubble, rubble? Ooh. Order, order, Counsel! Precisely whose life do you propose this man was plotting to end? Uh, Mr. Garadub? <laughs> the answer couldn't be simpler. Now we've unraveled a mystery this far. Mr. Shamspear wanted to end the life of... No, oh, it's gotta wait. be Sasaki. Yeah. Wait. Ah, yes. So... Oh, because of the... I completely forgot that there was another piece of evidence that we talked about. The guy who lived in the room before Soseki. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. right. Okay. All right. He yeah. wants that room. Yeah, he's been he's been trying to get Green Ember. I, I re I'm getting the memories coming back now. I remember he when he came to the lodgings, he insisted trying to get the second floor. Garadub's only forty six. Oh my God, he's aged like a precedent. <laughs> uh, I mean, seeing the stuff he's been through, you know what? I get it. Oh, she's 38. She's only a few years older than me. That's cool. Wait, she's older than... Wait, Popeye's 23? Yeah, yeah, wait. <laughs> Popeye's 23? Oh, God. Oh, I love it. Let's go. Let's see. Oh, don't... okay. This is the guy that was in there before. But he also They died. are two years apart. That guy and Popeye are two years apart. They're just built different. <laughs> yeah. Someone had- well, this guy came from a rich family, so, you know. So he wants to kill Natsume, but not for any personal reason. He just wants that room to be empty so he can go to it. Yes, I think that's what we're getting towards here. Yeah. Wait, how, how old is, uh, 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 Gregson? 44, okay. Sure. I mean- Oh, I'm older than Herlock. Jesus. Okay. I'm, the same age I'm his Herlock. age. <laughs> Anyways. I, I'm sorry. We got distracted by age. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. Which real talk is uh is honestly you know, actually you know what most video games don't don't put in birthdays. Never mind. Sometimes we can get character ages, but we never get birthdays. <laughs> If a gas lamp were to go out, it would be noticed immediately, of course. But a gas stove, on the other hand, could be silently, ex silently extinguished by the killer without anyone noticing. I'll live around those parts myself, so I know what it's like. 
I can tell you, trying to sleep without the stove lid is pretty much suicide. You'd freeze to death in no time. Mr. Garretov, the landlord, has a large fireplace in his part of the residence on the top floor. In other words, it wasn't the landlord, but a fellow lodger's whose life Mr. Shamsphere was trying to end. Outrageous. I'm talking, of course, about the defendant. Mr. Nasumi isn't the villain in this case. He's the victim this man was trying to murder. Good gracious! Objection. Everything's been flipped! The accused is actually the aggrieved. Interesting. However, the fundamental facts of the case remain unchanged. Namely... And the accused is the aggressor here. Huh? Uh, how can you still claim that? Because the script forces him to, I don't know. Let us indulge your fancies for a moment and assume that there was oh, indeed poison on the mouth of the gas pipe. The question that then arises is who put it there? We who? really doing this? Who did put it there? I mean, no, that's a valid point. Who put it there? The only logical conclusion is that the person responsible was aware of this man's trickery with the gas supply and his intent to kill. Yes, that would indeed seem logical. If the assailant were unaware, how would he or she have been known to lace the end of the gas pipe with poison? No doubt we must ask. How could anyone have known of Mr. Shamspear's murderous designs? Ha! <laughs> you need to suggest... Naturally, the sole possible answer to that question couldn't be more obvious. Only the man whose life was being threatened could possibly have known. I mean, that is a pretty valid point, but... What? Valid point, but have you met Saseki? Yeah, he exactly. He doesn't know shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In other words... The person who put the poison on the gas pipe, in what was a clear retaliatory attack, can only have been the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Uh. Whatever Mr. William Shamsbeer may or may not have contrived see, to I, do. See, here's the thing. I can't even be mad at this explanation just because, yeah, we don't... He going. He's going by the evidence alone. Yeah, it had to be only Natsumi right now, because we don't know any- Well, he- the prosecution doesn't know if there's anyone else. I'm starting to wonder, would this trial have been a fine if we just didn't have that one section where he was explaining about the thymes and the- and the teapot? If probably. We just, if we just omitted that, this probably would have flowed so much better, and we probably wouldn't be so damn annoyed by fancies. Because this argument, this doesn't bother me. I get where he's coming from, because mm. I can- I can understand that, because that's- he's just going by the evidence. But yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, that's thing, a fair point. Because, yeah, I'm annoyed with this argument now, but it's because he made a really crappy argument earlier. Yeah. <laughs> he was nevertheless the victim of a potentially lethal poison attack. Huh. And the only person who could possibly have perpetrated that attack is the accused, Mr. Natsume. The defense, is, the defense counsel's theorizing has failed to avert suspicion from the accused. Far from it. In fact, now that a clear motive for the poisoning has been successfully established, that suspicion is greater than ever. Would you not agree, my Nipponese friend? Uh... Ah! See, I, I can, I can, I can go with that, just because nobody here knows about Natsumi, so it's like, yeah. So I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, kind of wish we could just admit that teapot and just let the trial just run its course like it did, it probably would have been fine. How did he manage to turn that around on me so rapidly? I don't know, that whole, I'm sorry, that whole section is now actually starting to bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Danahoto, you must respond. Otherwise, the members of the jury may very well change the opinions against us again. 
And this may be our last chance to gain the advantage. I say with a smile, even though it's a desperate situation. What advantage? Well, it would seem that somebody put poison on the gas pipe in Mr. Shamspear's room. So we must name that person now and absolve Mr. Natsume of guilt. You mean, name the true culprit? I know it might sound impossible, but if we fail to do that, I have no doubt that Mr. Natsume's fate will be sealed once and for all. As it happens, one possible culprit does come to mind. The evidence, the poison, it's all pointing to a particular person now. Prosecution calls for the jury to consider their leanings again. I trust you'll make the correct choice this time, Mr. Foreman. What? Oh, don't you worry. We know exactly what... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I actually feel like hold it should have been there instead of objection, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> there is one other person who I believe could have been involved in all of this. The true culprit of this crime. The true culprit? A term found only in second-rate novels featuring third-rate, third-rate great detectives. My Nipponese friend. But why not? This boss has gone on so long already, I see no reason to cut it short before it's disappointing climax. Well, I got unfortunate news because I'm looking at the clock, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. God, can we at least find out before we forget about it for three weeks? No, <laughs> no, we gotta leave as the cliffhanger. No, no, keep reading. Tell us, tell us, my learned Nipponese friend, what is your latest theory? Who is the so-called true culprit of this crime? All right, so who do we think it is? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it on top of the person so we know. <laughs> There's only two it people that come to mind. Oh, I knew it! No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only two people come to mind. Mr. Garada, because he owns the place. I don't know why he would have done it, but sure. And the other one being the guy who died. But he died a while ago. He died like a month ago. Yes. And didn't Mr. Shamspear get into his room a month ago? No, he didn't. Oh. He just killed him. Never that was mind. it. <laughs> he, he only did was kill him. He never, he never, he's, he still has yet to be able to get into the second logic. But, like, you're close. Well, I mean, I, I have another theory. What's your theory? Shamspear. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's the answer. Sorry to I say. I don't know. He could have poisoned himself as an alibi. We don't know. Okay, well, I'll give you, um, well, here, KP's, KP's kind of almost there, but it does have something to do with Duncan Ross. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking. Like, he's dead, but who might want revenge? I know, you might have to spell it out for the rest of us. Well, right. okay, I, I understand where we're going with this then, but do we have any proof that Olive ever went into the... Yeah, that's my problem. Like, I don't yeah. really have proof that she did it, but, like... I Doesn't don't matter. It's just like... The answer, I'll give you the answer. The answer is yes, we do have proof. It's just been a long time. We do have it. It's in our evidence. I just can't get to it because we're kind of trapped on this page right now. But we have it. And yes, it is olive green. <laughs> but okay. I, think, wow. I think it's the faucet of, we'll get to the evidence when we get there. It's clearly like process of elimination. The only option right now is olive green. <laughs> Because there's no one Did really Did Shamspear kill Duncan? Yeah. Du D well, Duncan's still alive. Oh, oh no, no, sorry. Dun oh, sorry. No, no, I was well, thinking so of Popeye. Here's the, so, here's sorry. The thing. so here's the thing. We haven't we haven't established that Shamspear did it, but considering he stayed in the second lot, he was staying in the second floor, and he died? Yeah, the, the, I, I, I've been confused about the, the time windows where everyone's been living in the room. Yeah, so sorry. My... The, moment so, I saw that, the moment I saw that Duncan passed away a month ago, I'm like, wait. Shamspear's been living there longer than that. Yeah, he has, because he's been trying to get into the second floor lodgings, but everyone's been... There's someone always occupying there. He still hasn't had a chance to go into the second floor, 
because as soon as Duncan died, then Soseki came in, and now he's trying to take him out. <laughs> so, like, at this so point... So, in, in a situation where Shamspear killed Duncan... Oh, Olive Green wants this man dead. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. She would definitely... She's definitely the only person we can think of that would cause it. We... It's the, the and now the process is if it's just proving that point. It's gonna be. It's obviously her. Just, it's like, we just gotta yeah. prove that point, which we can worry I mean, about in the next video. What were you saying? Okay. You oh, saying? I was just gonna say, just from the previous case with Natsume, we know that she was going by the house in the first place. Yeah. And from the sounds of it, it seems like she had no reason to be going there. So we have that as a as a backup. But the problem is just knowing if yeah, she when definitely. And yeah, because she definitely walked over to where Ger the Garrett is lodging after Duncan had passed, too. Like, this was very mm -hmm. recent, so there's, like, there's definitely no reason for her to be over there at all. So, uh, so yeah, we're just gonna, we'll leave it on green, and we'll, we'll, we'll go further into this in the next video. So we'll see you all then. Thank you, all of you. You tried your best. I'm sorry you didn't kill the bastard.